Hello, everyone. This is Reverend Richard Miner. I am the Graduate Engagement Officer here at One Spirit Learning Alliance, and it is my great pleasure tonight to have Reverend Laureen Williams with me. Hi, Laureen. Welcome. Hello, Richard. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Laureen is a graduate of the uh, Interspiritual Counseling Program, the class of 2017, and she is also a graduate of the seminary class of 2013. So uh, that is quite an accomplishment, Laureen. I know you did the seminary first, and then you followed with the Interspiritual Counseling Program. Yes. Uh, you've been doing some amazing, amazing things, both in and out of One Spirit, uh, it, during both programs and since then as well. So I'd like to find out a little bit about your ministry and what you're doing now. Okay, thank you. Um, well, right now, what's interesting is I'm working full time. So that definitely impacts my ability to do ministry full time. Mm -hmm. So what I've started to do is um, I've been someone that loves sports and I've always wanted to be a sports chaplain. Um, but instead, what I've started to do was do invocations at a lot of sporting events. And that's been something that's great because it's been an opportunity to um, presence and invoke the spirit into sporting events. And I think one of the things that's great about that is that often um, people engage in sports and they kind of see like the impossible happen oftentimes. There are phrases like a Hail Mary. You know, there are all sorts of ways in which we incorporate it, but we're not always present to it. And so it's nice to be able to do that. And then the other thing that I've been doing is I have um, continued to do ceremonies. I've done some weddings. I've done baby blessings. I've done some rites of passage as well mm -hmm. for a woman that was a young lady that was going off to college. And um, a lot of the friends of her mother's wanted to get together and prepare her and give her some of the wisdom that we've had from our college experiences and also give her a chance to ask questions. And um, I've done very, very different things. I'm currently working on a workshop um, for NFL athletes that I'd like to shop around um, as a way of supporting them in bringing more transformation and leadership to what they do. And as part of that, that they would start to take on the domestic violence and the other things that are happening in their league. Wow, you've got quite uh, quite a few things going on at the, at the same time. I know that you're also very involved with One Spirit in Action yes. as well. Yes. Can you can you tell us a little bit about your experience with that and what you're working on now? Uh, well, One Spirit in Action. What I love about that is the activism piece. Um, I think one of the things I'm really interested in is making a difference. Mm -hmm. um, not just for people, but for what people behind us inherit in terms of the world, in terms of our structure, in terms of institutions, in terms of policies. And so one of the things I love about One Spirit in Action is this real opportunity to both marry something I love, the sacred community, but also um, make a difference out in the world. And so we're working on a workshop that we have the privilege of presenting at the reunion um, we've also done programming, you know, one of which is building bridges. And mm -hmm. so there's been this opportunity to have people come together and have very interesting conversations as a way of connecting, you know, spirit to what we do out in the world. And I think that's probably the best way of speaking about my ministry is that um, my interest is in how to have the sacred be more alive in the secular and have us get that there really is no separation of church and state. That there's just one thing and then there's mm -hmm. this chance to really experience all of it. The more we can do that, the more life will be fulfilling. That's really, that's really a beautiful thought. Can, can you speak a little bit about how your time at ISC has impacted you and your life and how it's changed your ministry and the way you are in the world? Ah, my time in the Inches Spiritual Counseling Program was amazing. One, you know, it was a really rough time because I lost my brother, my younger brother, during that time. And there was something about being in that having tools in that kind of container that made it all seem 
not just like, oh, I can move through it, but to really be um, expanded by it. You know, one of the things that you take on in the interspiritual counseling program is how to be present and be available and keep expanding yourself, be responsible for the space that you are, but also keep expanding the space that you invite another in. And um, I use that often at work in meetings, especially if they're tense meetings or the topic might be something that's confrontational. Um, I use it whenever I do program, whenever I'm doing um, ceremonies, often if I'm talking to a couple or if I'm talking to a mother who's about to have a child or, you know, like often the skills of getting people present, deep breathing, listening to what's both said and what's not said. I think that's one of the gifts of the interspiritual counseling program is that you're listening so deeply that you often hear what's not said and often what's not said is spirit or heart. And I think that that's the beautiful thing to be able to return that to people and have them hear it and own it and express it. Has that, has that had a profound impact on your work as a minister and your work in the world? Yes. Um, I think one of the things that um, it's helped tremendously in both my counseling of people in ministry. Um, often I've had friends as well that have come to me when they're really dealing with some difficult circumstances and situations. And I'm able to both be a space for them to just say whatever they need to say, but to have them not resist what they're dealing with, to have them get that it's all part of the journey. And I think that's the beauty of the interspiritual counseling program is that the skills that you get, you realize that nothing gets thrown away in the journey. All of it is used, all of it is useful. And so the biggest thing is how can you be open to receiving what's in front of you as a lesson or as an invitation or as a, an opportunity to expand or to deepen your relationship with your own divine self. Wow, that sounds really incredibly profound and extremely, extremely valuable for anyone going into any type of counseling or ministry work. Yes, it really has been. So you would recommend the program? Oh, highly. Highly. And um, I think, you know, what's beautiful, too, is that as you're doing the work, um, you're also going through the process mm -hmm. yourself, you know, and so um, and you're also living life. So you're also dealing with stuff. And there's a real deep intimacy to the community and a real um, amazing amount of support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you've gained some really valuable skills. You've learned a lot. You've had an incredible journey. Now, going forward, I know in the next, uh, and when this goes out, I think it'll be a week away. It will be the reunion, the first level reunion. Yes. And I know that you're going to be leading a workshop at the reunion. And it sounds like what you've learned is going to have a profound impact on the content and the method of that workshop as well. Can you tell us a little bit about the workshop you're planning to lead? Sure. Um, so one of the things about the interspiritual counseling program, which I've spoken to, is about um, deepening not just the container you are, but also being responsible for the container and the space that you are. Each of us comes with our own stuff, if you will. And mm -hmm. the work of the um, workshop will be actually taking on, oh, what is the stuff that I bring to the table? Because mm -hmm. the more you're able to deal with the things that have us not experience our own wholeness. Once mm -hmm. you're dealing with that and you are present to your wholeness, your perfection, then you can actually make a difference for other people. And then activism comes from a place of creating wholeness, not fixing something that's wrong or mm -hmm. from a moral high ground, but it actually is transformative. And that's the intention of the workshop is to leave people with the skills to do that kind of sacred work that leaves you out in the world doing activism from a place of transformation. Wow, that sounds really amazing. I hope that you get a lot of people for that. So what is next for you? What is coming up in the future? Uh, well, one of the things that's interesting, I chuckle because um, I've always wanted to write a book, wasn't quite sure what it would be on. And as I mentioned earlier, um, 
as we were talking before the interview, I have always wanted to be a sports chaplain. And I'm mm-hmm. thinking about writing a sports Bible or a football Bible. So one of those is to use some of the uh, scripture or certain lessons um, mm-hmm. from different sacred texts and actually marry them to uh, football terms or football, you know, um, events or things that have happened, games, things like that. So I think that would be a fun way of making the sacred more accessible to people. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's one piece. The other thing is um, I've been blogging once a week. And so that's my own personal journey. And one of the things that I'm up to is putting my personal journey out for people as an invitation to really look at their own journey. And Mm -hmm. realize that um, I'm interested in a minister being someone not different from someone else, but someone who says I'm willing to put my relationship with the divine, make it public. And, mm. I think, and and practice it in front of you as a demonstration for something possible, not as an answer to something that I know that you don't. Wow, that's amazing. Can you talk a little bit more about your experience with doing that? It has been a hoot. <laughs> so a <laughs> lot of friends have, it's, it's really started a conversation. A lot of people have looked at certain terms. For example, recently I fell. Um, and I, you know, hurt my knee pretty badly. Um, and I use that as part of the post to talk about sometimes how we make choices and the consequences of those mm-hmm. choices. And part of it was I had the thought, you know, I, should, I shouldn't, you know, I should commute in my sneakers, let's say. And I didn't. And I laughed at the thought that, you know, often there's a thought that we have that's either intuition, spirit, and we dismiss it. Mm, and that yes. often leads us down a road and to consequences. And so I just use something simple to kind of highlight something bigger. And it, so many people came back with sharing their own stories or saying, oh my God, that just spoke to what I was dealing with. So it's been fun. It, my interest is in having people be in conversation. Well, now, if I want to see your blog, where do I, where do I find it? Oh, see that. Well, it's a Facebook. I do it on my own personal Facebook page. (laughs) All right. But at some point I will definitely have it as a a blog that's, you know, access to everyone. Okay. Well, we've only got a couple of minutes left. So before we sign off, do you have any final thoughts or anything you'd like to share with the community before we get together at the reunion? Let's see what I'd like to share. Um, I'd like to share just how, um, incredible a community that we are and that we belong to. And um, I'd like to invite us all to recognize the time is now, like this is our time. And Mm -hmm. I say that because so many of us came to One Spirit or the Interspiritual Counseling Program from so many areas. And many of us have gone back to those areas or doing something new, but we're in so many different, we're not like your traditional minister. And as such, we have access to people in a whole new and profound way. And I think just your presence and having a conversation can make all the difference in the world that it doesn't have to be big, but the small ends up having great magnitude and impact. Wow, that is beautiful. Like so many things you have shared with us, that is really, really beautiful and very, very profound. Lorraine, I would like to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us and for sharing your thoughts and your ministry and your plans with us. It's been really a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you. It has been my delight and such a privilege. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you again soon. See you soon. Bye.